Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel, Chelsea 4, Leicester City 2. It's Monday morning and I've woken up having watched an absolute feast of football yesterday. Chelsea getting the job done. I was in my hotel room and I stayed up to watch Man United 4, Liverpool 3, which I'm not going to lie to you, don't like either of those two sides. But what a game of football. And I would say if I was to rank that, it would probably go in the top 10 games of football that I've ever seen. Just because of all of the action that was going on, what's at stake with Klopp, the 120th minute winner, and then the draw afterwards. Chelsea have got Manchester City in the FA Cup semi-final, which, you know, Liverpool get knocked out. Chelsea don't really want to play Liverpool again and lose at Wembley, but you get the next worst slash best, whichever is the worst. Man City, Pep Guardiola, but this is the, the draw that you don't want. Man United are beatable. Coventry City, championship. But Chelsea get Man City, you've got to beat the best to be the best. So we're in another cup semi-final. It's positive. In this video today, I want to heap some praise on a few players. Tomorrow, I fly to England. I'm going to hopefully be attending Chelsea versus Burnley and Chelsea versus Manchester United at Stamford Bridge. And if you want to see match vlogs, please hit the like button on this video and let me know in the comments that you want the match vlogs back. What I saw yesterday against Leicester was a bundle of different things. Some on this hand fill me with a lot of excitement, particularly Nicholas Jackson, Malo Gusto, Cole Palmer and Mudrick. And then on this hand, we're going to focus on two players here, Sanchez and Sterling. And I will start with the negatives and then I want to talk about some more positives. First of all, Sanchez, because I think Sterling is the obvious one, but I have said all season, from the moment that we saw Petrovic introduced to this team, there's no way that Sanchez gets back into this Chelsea team. Pochettino in the build-up to this game said, Sanchez needs minutes. He's not been playing. That doesn't mean he needs minutes, mate. This isn't about charity. This isn't about Chelsea bought him for 10 million more than Petrovic, so by default, because of the money spent, Sanchez is one, Petrovic is two. Petrovic is a better goalkeeper than Sanchez. He's a better shot stopper. He's, a better, he's better with the ball at his feet. He's more composed. There is no way, I've said this all season, there is no way that Sanchez is above Petrovic. So, now that we're in a cup semi-final, I don't want to start hearing, but he's the cup goalie. No. Petrovic plays that cup semi-final against Manchester City. I thought Sanchez yesterday was shocking. We move into Raheem Sterling, who a lot of people afterwards have come out and said, oh, well, Chelsea fans shouldn't be booing. I'm going to give my thoughts on that first of all. Chelsea fans that pay their very hard-earned money to go to Stamford Bridge, the majority of them, they want to see players out there on the field who are fighting for the shirt, who deserve to be out there because they're keeping certain players on the bench, and when you see a player like Sterling, who's got all of that experience, who's supposed to be one of the leadership figures at the club, constantly kind of just like jogging, not even jogging around, not putting in all of the effort that we know he can do, that's why fans boo. Fans don't boo because he misses a penalty. Fans don't boo because he takes a free kick from 19 yards and hits it almost out of Stamford Bridge. They boo because when you're making those high profile errors, and those high-profile mistakes that are glaring, one-on-ones, penalties, free, whatever it may be, it's everything else that goes around it, which is either why you get clapped off because you gave the effort, or you didn't. And it's the, uh, it's the outside parts, away from these isolated incidents, which is why Sterling was getting booed, because it's been all too often this season that he's just absolutely nowhere near the level. And it looks to me, I'm not saying he's not trying, but he's certainly not putting in 100%. And I think when you're in a rut of form, you've got to owe it to yourself to do that. And I think with Sterling, the issue is he doesn't really have to prove anything to anyone. We know that the best years of his career in terms of goals, assists, trophies, medals, have already been and gone. He got all of that at Manchester City, achieved almost everything you could want to achieve during that period, constantly called up for England, one of the, one of the always there players. So Raheem Sterling comes to Chelsea, they're clearly nowhere near the levels of City, and he's got all of this so-called burden, maybe you could say, on his shoulders, and it looks to me like he's not up for it. He doesn't want to be the leader and the experienced member of this Chelsea squad who will give 110% to show the young ones 
what it is to be a top level Premier League footballer. Sterling doesn't need to prove it, so therefore I don't think he will. And I think that is why Chelsea need to move away from Raheem Sterling now. It's not about he's a rubbish footballer, send him to Saudi. Look, at the moment Sterling is bang out of form. You can see it on his face. It is almost like keep him away from the team for his own good at this point because I don't see it improving. He's never been known as a finisher and he keeps getting in these opportunities and chances and he keeps screwing it up. And you've got players like Nicholas Jackson, Cole Palmer, Mudrick. These are the three we're going to start talking about here that are all fighting right now that are showing clear improvements in this Chelsea team. Mudrick, I thought, was really good again yesterday. Martin Keown was saying it on the BBC commentary. I thought it was a great shift. We know that defensively, he's not that player yet. Eden Hazard wasn't really that player either because he just did the magic going forward. Mudrick isn't there yet, but what we are seeing from him is confidence, a swagger, a flair that we weren't seeing enough earlier this season. And that's credit to Pochettino. It took him a bit longer than it took me and a few others on this platform to know that Mudrick going through the 10 role is absolutely where you get the best out of him. Nicholas Jackson has become very quickly one of the best players in England right now at entering those channels, be it the right-hand side yesterday where he absolutely dominated that Leicester back line. We've also seen it many times this season where he comes out to the left, which a lot of people are saying is, is, is his position, playing off that left wing. At the moment, I'm looking at Jackson and I'm looking at Mudrick. I don't see an out-and-out -out striker in either of them. I don't see an out-and-out -out left winger in either of them. And they're certainly both not out-and-out -out tens. I would be playing Mudrick as a 10, Jackson through the middle right now, and I would be going with Noni Madweki potentially on the left or the right-hand side with Cole Palmer being in one of those other positions because Sterling isn't it. And at this point in time, Nicholas Jackson is slowly becoming the player that we wanted him to be. He's getting stronger. We're seeing these confident little flicks and then running in behind defenders. I know granted yesterday those two Leicester centre-backs are probably slower than me and you. But the fact of the matter is, we're getting more out of these players that a few weeks ago, if not months ago, we're looking at them and saying, I'm not really sure why we bought you. I don't know what you're bringing to this Chelsea team. You look to the bench and we're like, oh, bloody hell, Nkunku ain't there. We got injuries galore. Look, Nkunku wasn't it when he came back from injury and he's injured again. Right now, there are certain players in this team that I am so happy with. Jackson, Mudrick, and of course... Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer is world-class, guys. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that this kid, if Chelsea weren't so low in the table, there would absolutely be calls to say that he could be PFA Player of the Year. Considering he's doing this in a Chelsea team that haven't been firing, that have missed so many big chances this season, and yet still, these numbers, they're outstanding. 25 goal contributions in your first season at Chelsea when we're only in the beginning of March, middle of March, is sensational. And the way that yesterday, as Chelsea gained more control of the game towards the end of it, with Leicester only having 10 men, you see Cole Palmer trying to get on the ball at every given opportunity and all of the players around him are looking at him as that potential connector. Chukwemeka's goal, as much as Noni's goal is absolute incredible individual brilliance. And that was a fabulous goal. Credit to Madweki for that. Gets me excited about him too. Do you know what I mean? But with Cole Palmer, you've got Chukwemeka coming out after the game saying, if you come on, I'll assist you. Cole Palmer said that to him. Chukwemeka is looking for Palmer because he knows that Palmer, the way that he sees the game, it's leagues above what his age is. At the moment, I say Cole Palmer is conducting the game for Chelsea like a 28-29 year old winger in his prime would. He's absolutely brilliant. He's world class. There's no denying it. And I think the word generational, which gets thrown out so often, he's up there with Bellingham in Europe's top five leagues this season for under 21 players. Absolutely brilliant, Cole Palmer. And then there's Malo Gusto. Malo Gusto wins player of the match yesterday in this FA Cup game. Once more, Malo Gusto, we're talking about Palmer playing like a seasoned 28, 29 year old professional, is exactly the same from Malo Gusto. This guy is the real deal. And look, we've seen Reese James be out for long periods of time. 
so many times during his Chelsea career. The man is addicted to injuries, and I don't mean that in like a, you're an addict, mate, stop it. It's not like that, obviously. It's, it's unfortunate, we don't want it, and Reese doesn't want it either. But the fact of the matter is, Chelsea, it doesn't matter, in a sense, because that right-hand side is Gusto's now, and I would say that Reese James might actually prolong his career by playing second fiddle to Malo Gusto at right back at Chelsea. And it could be a change of position for Reese James. You might see him move into like a defensive six role. Maybe. That's a thought to let me know in the comments down below. Reese James is a six. Reese James is a right sided centre back. This could be what we need to do to get Reese in the team. Obviously, we know how good he is. And Reese James, if he's fit and healthy, in my opinion, is still the best right back in the world for me. Don't know if that's blue tinted glasses or not, but that's when he's fit, fully fit. And that's almost never. Malo Gusto, for me, is up there with Palmer joint as the signings of the season. Absolutely brilliant for both of them. Man City in the cup semi-final. Look, this is our final. If we get through Man City, we can beat Man United and we can beat Coventry City. We need to do everything to, over the course of the next few weeks, build up this form build up this momentum and go to Wembley, I think it's the 20th or the 21st of April, take the game to City, match them like we have done twice this season already and go there and get the job done and make it to the FA Cup final. And if you win an FA Cup this season, Pochettino, we're changing our tune very quickly. Yesterday, I think I can understand why maybe he took off Mudrick at the time. I was thinking, look, I don't know if you're watching the same game. I also thought he was simply protecting Raheem Sterling. Looks to me as though he saw Mudrick kind of stretching and thought that Sterling had more left in him. Don't agree with that, but like you can see it. And then obviously Chukwameka and Madueke score. So you've got to praise those substitutions. But to be honest, like I said to you in the build up to this game, if Chelsea keep on winning, I'm backing them at this point. We're not going to see a managerial change. Chelsea haven't been in bad form. Stamford Bridge is becoming a bit more fortress like again. There's reason here to be optimistic. Call me a flip-flop, call me whatever you want. I simply talk about what I see in front of me. Chelsea are improving. There's still these ridiculous teething issues at the beginning of second halves so that it's a capitulation. It is a disaster. And one of these days, we could be 3-0 up at half-time and, and be 6-3 down after 60 minutes if we're playing against the top team who are clinical. That's also possible because it is alarming how we change. But blimey, Jackson, brilliant form. Mudrick, I'm loving what he's performing with right now. Gusto, Palmer, obviously. But Sterling and Sanchez, drop them. Don't get them anywhere near this team in the build-up to that semi and for the rest of the Premier League season. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Come on, you Blues.